Welcome to the Retro Chat. Welcome to Daily News. My name is Andy Evans. And coming up for the next few minutes, we're going to be bringing you some of the latest news from around the world of professional wrestling, um, entertainment, movies, TV, you name it. We're going to be covering it. So let's kick it off this time with news on Doctor Who. So it's now been announced that Colin Baker's Doctor Who is coming back to Blu-ray. The BBC has announced a new Doctor Who Blu-ray set restoring the original series season 22. The latest in a run of classic Blu-ray box sets and this one focuses on the first full year with the sixth Doctor in the TARDIS. Six serials in all feature appearances from the infamous villains such as the Master, the Cybermen and the Daleks as well as the debut of the evil time lady called the Rani who is played by the iconic Kate Mara. In Mark of the Rani, both the Master and the Doctor are drawn into a plot by O'Mara's villain to conduct scientific experiments during the Luddite uprises. Other stories in the series feature the Doctor and Perry trapped under the surface by the crime lord Sill in Vengeance on Varos, while Patrick Troughton returns as the second Doctor for a team up against the Sontarans in the iconic two of Doctors. Every episode within season 22 has been restored for this Blu-ray release, which is priced at $43.99 and available for pre-order right now via Zavi, HMV, and Amazon. There's been hours of bonus material included in the box set as well, including brand new episode commentaries featuring Colin Baker and the companions of Nicola Bryant, who played Perry, and Janet Fielding, who played Tegan. Other special features include a making of documentary for the two Doctors, a brand new mini episode called The Eternal Mystery, and archival footage of Colin Baker providing the season on uh, promoting the season, sorry, on BBC shows and the updating the visual effects. In other news, well, that's Doctor Who, so that's a, a cool one for all of us to uh, to kind of be aware of because I, you know, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, so this is going to be great to go back and hear the classics. But one thing that I'm even more of a fan of is Cobra Kai. And recently there has been some news come out from Martin Cove as he teases revenge for John Kreese. Cobra Kai star Martin Cove shared a foreboding message alluding to John Kreese's highly anticipated return within season five of the Netflix series. By the end of season four, it seemed that legendary villain John Kreese might have been down for the count. But now actor Martin Cove is teasing his forthcoming revenge. On his Instagram, Cove posted a message about Kreese's return accompanied by an image of the show on Netflix's streaming service. Cove wrote, just remember, I've been chained and locked away before. It's just the beginning. Then it ended with the words, I am Cobra Kai. Now, it's likely that Cove is referring to his character's time as a prisoner during the Vietnam War, which was covered and featured within season three of Cobra Kai. Kreese, Terry Silver and their infantry were captured by Vietnam soldiers and forced to fight over a snake pit. And it's also been seen that Kreese offered to take Terry Silver's place uh, during those battles, potentially saving his life. Then they defeated their captain in a climatic battle to the death. Kreese freed his unit when the American forces arrived and he formed an alliance with Silver, proving it's not so easy bringing him down. At the end of season four, however, Kreese is in dire straits after Silver double crosses him following their win at the All Valley Tournament. He has Kreese wrongfully arrested for the attack on Stingray, but the story won't end there. Season five has already been confirmed and the show's creator, creators Hayden Schlossberg, John Hurwitz and Josh Howard do have an end game in mind. Not much is known about the future of the series at this time, but the end of Cobra Kai at season four does set up an action packed season five. Schultzberg has said that it will explore what things would have been like had LaRusso lost at the end of the Karate Kid 3, and that nerds of the valley need to be afraid. With Silver now having complete control of the Cobra Kai dojo, Daniel's Miyagi Do and Johnny's Eagle Fang dojo are sure to have their hands full. Schultzberg has also discussed the possibilities of spin-offs to expand the Karate Kid universe 
and young crease actor Barrett Carnahan is open to launching his own prequel series. He said that while he has no idea what the creators have planned, it would be badass to learn more about crease and the positive reception towards portrayal from fans has warmed his heart. So there's no denying that Cobra Kai, one of the most popular shows on Netflix, originally kicking off as part of YouTube Red and YouTube Premium. But one thing that we do know that another popular show is returning to the airwaves this time on March the 3rd. It's going to be on Paramount Plus in the US and on Amazon internationally. And that, of course, is Star Trek Picard. Now, season two of Picard is due to air. We know it's going to feature Q. And we also know that this lady is back. Guinan is returning to the Star Trek family. And as we've seen in the most recent trailer with Guinan, um, Whoopi Goldberg is back. We don't know what role she's going to make, but she is returning. That means she is going to be reuniting with the legendary Patrick Stewart, talking all things Next Generation, of course. More coverage of Star Trek Picard will be coming over the next few weeks as we lead in to season two, uh, airing on March the 3rd internationally on Amazon Prime. And we'll be covering that right here on the Retro Chat podcast. Now, our last news item for today is a bit about streaming, and it's looking at what was the top movie in 2021. Now, surprisingly, we had some great movies releasing uh, during 2021. Of course, most of the cinematic studios did streaming releases at the same time as the big theaters. But Luca has beaten all of the competition. Luca has to beat Red Notice, which was the iconic movie featuring... Gal Gadot, Ryan Reynolds, and of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and has already had several sequels attached to it. Now, I thought this was a fantastic film. Really enjoyed watching this one. But Luca, the Disney Plus movie, the Disney Pixar film, has gone straight to number one. Based on data from Nielsen and reported by Deadline, Disney and Pixar's interpretation of Italian culture and folklore garnered over 10 billion viewership minute. This was far super, surpassing the other top stream films from 2021, which was Moana and Raya and the Last Dragon, came in second and third with over 8 billion viewership minutes each. Frozen 2 placed fourth with over 6 billion and Netflix's Red Notice streaming movies include Cruella, Jungle Cruise, Black Widow and The Tomorrow War. Now, Nielsen only count minutes viewed via a television screen while compiling its streaming rankings, meaning that viewings are not counted. Moreover, the other streaming services, Hulu, Plus, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, Netflix, and Apple TV, are currently the only streaming services that are monitored, meaning the viewership from services like HBO Max or Peacock or Crunchyroll are not accounted for. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. In Nielsen. Now there's it. <laughs> However, it is <laughs> However, it still seems as though it is the most streamed movie of 2021. All right, that's it for this edition of the Daily News. We'll be back tomorrow, but a quick plug. Don't forget, Wednesday, we are back live at 8 p.m. Uh, as we're going to be looking back at Battlestar Galactica. It's episode 36. It airs at 8 p.m. right here on the YouTube channel and across the information superhighway uh, across all of the MOS network. Plus, you can catch it on the archive uh, on all of social media. So that's Battlestar Galactica tomorrow at 8 p.m. right here on uh, the Retro Chat Podcast Network. And don't forget this Sunday from 7 p.m. Uh, the guys from Ministry of Slam at the MOS Network will be back with the Royal Rumble recap. But that's it for me. I will see you all very soon. Until then, take care.